Okay, so the three H's of acute renal failure. Now, I want you guys to think of acute renal failure as these three steps here. Step one, step two, and step three in terms of how the body responds and reacts to it. Now, other than directly causing a toxin ah, in those kidneys, other than directly, let's say, pouring cement directly in our washing machines of the kidneys, pretty much washing machines, um, there's also three other ways that we can go into this acute renal failure, okay? So, let me explain the other ways we can go into acute renal failure here. So the other ways, I break down what's called the three H's here. Woo. So one H is hypotension. Now hopefully you guys can see this. Hypo, basically blood pressure. The other H is hypovolemia. Hypovolume. And the last H is hypoperfusion. Woo! Or basically hypooxygen, we can just say. Hypo O2. I'll just make it that simple. Okay? So let me break this down for you guys real quick. So what the heck does your blood pressure have to do with your kidney function? If you guys seen any of my videos on blood pressure, actually, you know what? Forget blood pressure. Any of my videos at, <laughs> at all, probably, you know that oxygen... Oxygen is the money. It's the money maker of the body. Without oxygen, your body breaks down and your body dies. So just like if you were to hold your breath, you die, pretty much. If you put a rubber band on your finger, your finger would turn purple and blue and your finger would die. We have to chop it up, right? Same thing with your kidneys. If you don't bring enough volume or enough pressure to your kidneys, your kidneys are going to lose oxygen, which is called hypoperfusion, and it's going to die, okay? So the main thing that we're concerned about is how much oxygen are we giving to your kidneys? Now, how does oxygen get to your kidneys? How the heck does oxygen even get around the body? Well, if you guys have um, made it this far in nursing school, <laughs> Hopefully you understand that oxygen you breathe in goes down through your tree, your respiratory tract, gets exchanged for CO2. These little oxygens jump aboard the train or these little cars, which are called hemoglobin, which are just red blood cells. This hemoglobin grabs it, goes back to the left atrium, down to the left ventricle, this left ventricle swells and bam, pushes that around the big aorta, down the body, and that's how we get oxygen to our body. Cool? So, what if there's not a lot, enough blood volume um, to push all this oxygen around the body? What if we're massively bleeding out we just got shot, let's say, in the stomach. We just got in a massive car accident and we're bleeding out. So we have half of the volume that we once had. Is there going to be enough blood carrying, I'm sorry, oxygen carrying blood to push oxygen around the body? The answer is no. Oxygen is being deprived from your body. Hypooxygen, hypo O2. So what about, let's go into this one, hypo-O2. Your patient is COPD. 
um, congestive, I'm sorry, chronic obstructive pulmonary. Fancy words for your lungs are jacked up. Your lungs aren't working right. So that exchange of oxygen onto the hemoglobin is not working correctly. So how do we get oxygen down to the kidneys? So your kidneys end up suffering. Now we're just focusing on kidneys right now. We're not even focusing on your extremities. We're not even focusing on your GI tract. We're just focusing on kidneys. So oxygen, if there's any oxygenation issues in the body, really screws up everything in the body, okay? So hypooxygen, that's the main thing. Hypovolume, we're going back to the same thing. How do we get this oxygen down to the body, down to the kidneys? We have to do it by this vehicle called volume, this hemoglobin that's inside the volume. What if there's hypotension? Basically meaning there's low blood pressure. We're bleeding out. Or let's say your patient is in septic shock. So there's a blood pressure drop. Now, if you saw any of my lectures on septic shock, hypoperfusion, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, hypo blood pressure equals hypoperfusion. So low pressure, low perfusion. Low blood pressure, low oxygen. Because there's not enough vehicles to get that oxygen down to your kidneys. How do we measure if there's enough blood pressure? Isn't blood pressure just like 120 over 80? Like what is, what? <laughs> so a lot of your nursing instructors and a lot of medical field in, in, in itself will measure how much is this pressure in the body being divvied up? How much is the average pressure around the body? What's like the mean? What's like the average? How much is everyone getting? How much pressure is everyone getting? This is something called the mean arterial pressure, MAP, MAP. And this directly correlates with how much blood, how much oxygen carrying blood your kidneys are getting. So if your MAP drops, let's say less than 65, 65 guys, that magic number, if your MAP drops less than 65, that means that your kidneys are not being perfused correctly. And you're probably going to be going into the oliguric phase, which your patient might already be in. So let's think about our geriatric patients. Your geriatric patients are already dehydrated. They have decreased muscle mass. This decreased muscle mass means that they're not holding on to a lot of fluid. They don't want to drink fluid or water, right? Um, you can barely even get them to eat sometimes because they're not hungry. They lose that appetite, hypovolume, because they're dehydrated. They're on a lot of blood pressure medications. Their kidneys aren't working right, so we're not going to filter out this blood pressure medication. So this might even cause a toxicity in too much blood pressure medication which can directly lead to a decrease in MAP, your mean arterial pressure. Let's say your elderly patient's been smoking for a number of years. Now they have emphysema and chronic bronchitis. Those two things fall under COPD, which leads to hypooxygen. So you can see kind of like this, uh, what I call a synergistic effect with our geriatric community, um, with our leading into acute renal failure, those three H's, hypo blood pressure, hypo volume, hypo oxygen, all leads back to one major issue, perfusion.